What's up, class? Today's lesson is spatial statistics. So I hope you can see this board here. I know there's a little white kind of reflecting off it in the corner there, but this is an example of a data table that you might see when you're working with spatial statistics. So what we have is an X and a Y coordinate as the first two, and those represent coordinates of the locations of certain points in a two-dimensional plane. Um, and then this third column here, the Zs, represents the data values at those locations. So if we want to visualize this a little bit, we can draw an XY coordinate plane here. We have X, Y, and now this could be an example, this could be like uh, a forest or coordinates within a, a country. And we're trying to look at things like elevation or uh, precipitation levels at different points in that country. So here you have your plane, and then you have a point right here. We're going to label that S1. So that's going to have the coordinates of X1, Y1. And then maybe we have a couple more here. We'll go S2, X2, Y2. I'm not going to write that out, but that's, I'm sure you guys can comprehend that. So we have S2, S3, S4. Now, I have data on these first four points, as you see in the top left here. But what if we pick another location? What if we pick a point right in the middle? And we call that S0. Now, we, we know the coordinates to that location. So we know where it is relative to these other points. But what we don't know is the data value at that location. So we want to predict that value based on its spatial correlation to these other points. So I rewrote the xy coordinate plane up in the corner so you can have a reference of what we're talking about here. But I'm going to start with going on uh, how we about how we find the prediction of the data point value at location s of zero. So we're going to denote that data point value as here we go here z of s zero. If you remember, we had the, the three columns x y were the coordinates z was the data. So z of s zero is the data value at coordinate system coordinate location S0. And so what is what is that going to equal? Well, in simple terms, it's going to be a combination of these other data point values. You know, these are all different elevations, say. So we have, you know, elevation of 1,000, 500, 300. And then we know that this is going to be some sort of combination of those based on its correlation to these other points. So we can write that as a sum of the weights of some set of weights times each other data point. So this would be zi representing z1 through 4 here. So we need to figure out now how to weight these data points um, to come up with a prediction. And that's going to be based off of the correlation that each point is going to have with S0, which has to do with the distance, mostly that like how close it is um, and how closely correlated other points that are similarly distance are. Um, and so we're going to do something called uh, Krieging, ordinary Krieging, to come up with an expression for z hat of SO, which is going to be the, the estimation of the predictor. So the way Krieging works is it's going to look to minimize the expected value of the true observed predicted value versus the, pre the estimated prediction value squared. And this is, a common, uh, this is a common way that unknown data values are predicted. Um, and so we're going to run through this equation here really quickly and show you how we can come up with an equation for z hat of s0 for an uh, estimator of the data value at point S0. So we're going to start with uh, simplifying this expression, the expected value of z of S0 minus z hat of S0. So we know that z of S0 is going to be a combination of the other z's, uh, the other data point values. So we can write it as, so let's be squared, we can write it here as z of s0 minus, and I'm going to do this in 
matrix form. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, then you're going to have to consult one of my previous videos from another course. But for now, uh, just bear with me here. This is going to be the weights, so the vector of the weights multiplied with the vector of uh, the data point, the original data point values. And this is still squared. So now we want to simplify this even more. We know that expected value of x squared is equal to the variance of x times the expected value of x, and then in parentheses squared. I'll write that out right here as the variance between z of s0 and w prime z. Uh, and then that's going to be plus the expected value. Sorry, this is supposed to be minus. Expected value of z of s0 minus w transpose z. And then all of this is squared. So minimizing this expression is the equivalent to minimizing this expression here, which we're going to do in the next video. Okay, so then the covariance between these two terms, um, and this also would take a little bit more explaining than the time that we have right now, but it's going to come out to 2 times the covariance, which is going to be C prime, C prime W, right there. Um, and so this is still going to be the minimization problem right here. And we're still going to have the, the Lagrange uh, multiplier on the end. So the calculations to this minimization are somewhat complex and time intensive. So I just did them all uh, separately and then show, we'll show you here uh, what the final equation for the weights will be. And if you want to check out those equations, you can check out my follow-up video. But for now, we're just going to move along so you can understand more of the statistical concept behind it instead of just focusing on the matrix and vector differentiation. Um, so using this, we now go back to the original equation for z hat of SO. And we get, if you remember, that's going to be equal to W transpose times z. And so all we need to do here is now take the transpose of this, multiply it by z and do some rearranging of terms. Um, and there's gonna be one key thing that you're gonna notice once you, when you do that. And that's gonna be that you get this term that looks like this. And what this is, and you're gonna see it a couple times once you, once you uh, multiply these terms out. What this is, is actually the estimator of mu, mu hat, according to generalized least squares. So using these three definitions, we can come up with a final estimate for z hat of S0. And what that's going to look like when it's all simplified. Again, not, nothing too complicated with the math. It's just for the sake of time, we're going to skip a few steps. This is going to equal mu hat, that def same definition we have over here, plus C transposed sigma inverse times Z minus mu hat. Now let's take a look, a second to look at this and understand what it means. So the first component is mu hat. We have that here. So that's going to be the average, the mean data point value at the other four points, the known points that we have here, S1, S2, S3, S4, we're going to take the average value. And that's going to be the primary part of the predictor for Z hat at this new location at zero. And that makes sense. You know, it's going to be the average value um, among, among all the points that we already know, which is very intuitive. But then this next part is accounting for the fact that there is some correlation between points that are closer to S0 than with points that are farther away. Um, and so this is kind of a variance term here. And you see it does have the, the C and the, sig and the sigma here. So this is a term that deals with the variance based off of the correlation between uh, SO and 
the location SO and some of the other locations. Um, and so this is going to be the final equation for our estimator, z hat of S0. Um, and you can use this to then find the estimated value at, at location SO. And hopefully that will give you some more insight into the spatial uh, relationship in a data set with XY coordinates.